<laughs> Mr. Presley, can I ask you something? I want to, uh, was, was there, you say that, you know, you knew what you signed up for when you did it. Uh, you know, you went into the to the game with that mentality, you know what I'm saying? Kill or be killed, eat or, eat or, eat or not eat. Oh, uh, no. I, uh, I, was, no. There, was there a voice over your over this whole time that you was you doing your thing that you, you you reflect back on now that was telling you, stop? No. There was nobody, no mother, no auntie, nobody no, that was there. No, because I was smooth, man. You Like, you, if you make $10 million, dog, and your name ain't even ringing, my name wasn't ringing in the police station, man. There's two other motherfuckers got caught, jammed up, and, and brought my name up and got me. And well, I was that's normally trouble. how it happens. Yeah, you but know? I'm just like, my, my, I, wasn't, I wasn't moving like that, man. I was a quiet storm. I was a quiet storm, brother. I wasn't, I didn't have the Big Meech mentality. Big Meech is a friend of mine. Southwest T is a friend of mine. And those guys, uh, and then you see the polar, the, the polar, like how the opposite they move. One was super quiet, one was like, right. I was I was the Southwest T approach where, you know, mm. yeah, I was getting money, you know, Southwest T getting just as much as money as Meech. But he wasn't out here at the park. I, I never, I never drank, I never smoked. Yeah, I had a fancy car, I had hundred thousand dollar cars, but I never drove them every day. Like it, it really was a waste. That was just a reward to myself. Just to, you know, I did it. You know, I, you got to set goals, and I set them, and I did it. But I wasn't no person that. Uh, I remember one time I was I went out of town and we was in a barber shop and my guy was wearing a lot of Versace and this is you know before everybody everybody designed horrors now. So, but he was he was one of the guys that wore that shit for real. Like he didn't have one piece. He this is what he wore every day and he had some seven hundred dollar gym shoes in nineteen ninety four. I remember this because that's when uh, it was ninety yeah ninety four ninety five whenever the the Magic played the Houston Rockets. And so the guys and they was laughing at him, and he was like, "Oh man, you y'all got on these little Reeboks and all that." So we just was, we was signifying back and forth. So he uh, he was talking about, "Man, all my stuff paid for and woo." I said, "Man, I hope I hope you got a ten year old Range Rover. I hope you ain't got no note on it." You yeah. see what I'm saying? Right. They said, "Oh, your car's leased." I said, dude, I ain't got no job. I got, I got, I got a hundred and five thousand dollars, uh, five hundred SL. I ain't got no job here. I, I ain't finna go pay no cash for this car. You know what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> that, 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 that ain't, that ain't the, the purpose of that. So, I had the car, but I didn't drive it every day. And this 1990, I bought the car in '92. So, you know, I probably had a couple of more years to pay on it. But it wasn't leased, but I had a note on it. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, we back then, you know, that was the. I never was a guy that that, that tried to stunt. Uh, 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 that wasn't my job. But people were stunned for me because they know, like, shooting dice. Like I told you, I won a lot of money at the casinos and stuff. I stopped gambling in the streets because you expose your hand too much when you're gambling in the streets. I mean, one day I was uh, went to Houston's restaurant and they started pitching pennies. I lost sixty thousand dollars pitching pennies, and this is just on credit. And so, th and at that point, they didn't even know I had that much money. I go to the crib, go get the sixty thousand. Throw it out the window. Like, nigga, here, here go your money. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and my man called me something, man, this money like 1500 short. I said, nigga, get it like Tyson got the belt. You know what I'm saying? Because I know how to count money. You know what I'm saying? Who are playing with the money? They playing. But the point being is that, <laughs> no, nah, I'm saying the, the point being is that they didn't even, even at that point, they still, it still didn't register them that, man, this dude just lost $60,000 coming out of a restaurant and didn't blink. Mm. <laughs> Answer me this, though, Keith. For those people that are watching and, you know, they, like you say, you were catching so much scrutiny just being on magazines and stuff like that to say what the drugs did to the community. Did that ever cross your mind as you were making the money and how it was impacting the community? No, I just, I mean, I keep it honest, man. I could sit there and play uh, choir boy and all that stuff, man. When you get money, man, you're getting money, man. But one what I take solace in is that I never put a gun or drugs in a kid's hand. And I had plenty of them approach me. Uh, one of my proudest moments in my life, and I, and I stand by this today, I'm 58 years old. I had this big old fancy AMG Benz, a real AMG, not the AMG kit, the AMG kit with the real, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this kid came up to me and he said, man, I want to be just like you. And I knew he wanted to be like me because he saw the car and the jewelry and all that. And I said, if you want to be like me, go to college. Wow. And uh, when I came home from school, man, one of my partners called me, and he said, "Man, this kid named such and such." I was like, "I don't remember." Put him on the phone. He's like, "Man, I remember. I told you I wanted to be like you, man. And I took your word, man. I graduated from college." Come on now. Now that that like that's the impact I had on somebody. That I had no idea. I could have easily put a gun in his hand. I could have easily put some dope in his hand. I could have easily had him doing some stuff that sent him to jail. But I actually I said something positive to him, and and 
that's where I'm at right now. I know that my story uh, is going to inspire a lot of people to step out the game. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to inspire some kids to let them know that they don't have to go to jail to be uh, validated. They can take a, a, a straight path and, and, and get to the money. Mm -hmm. And and I'm gonna be the message that I bring. Uh, I, I end up getting a lot of time in uh, the penitentiary for the game I was playing. And getting back to answering your question about I, when I was thinking, of, I wasn't thinking about that. But I always sold drugs if it's a such thing with honor. Right. If it's a such thing, you know what I'm saying? Because I, the way I justified it is, I'd rather be selling drugs and not selling kids' hands than to be a priest. Uh, undressing these boys or being mm -hmm. a pastor trying to sleep with all the parishioners right. or be a crooked cock that's sending people to jail for life knowing they put uh, fabricating this uh, this uh, uh, evidence or a judge that's over sentencing these people that's how I justify that's in my mind so that's how I was able to move I did it with, with and, and, and even God respect that because that's why I'm here free now that's why I'm successful that's why I have people DMing me from all over the world this is this is tripping me out, dog. All over the world asking me to be their mentors, mm. because the message that I'm promulgating now is, hey, the hustle is transferable. Come on now, you know. So I was a drug dealer for about a month or two. Then I became a hustler. So I was hustling drugs. So now I'm hustling these books. I'm still selling books. My movement for the book is called From Books of Cane to Books of Game. I'm selling I'm selling game now. So most of the time when I was selling keys of cocaine, I would make a thousand dollars. Guess what? I'm selling a book right now and I'm still making a thousand dollars. And this one right here, I can't go to the penitentiary for. Exactly. Does it feel better though? Be honest. Does it feel better knowing you're getting legal money than that fast money back in the day? Which honestly, one which honestly, one, which rush honestly. is better? Well, illegal is better. I mean, as far, as far as the rush, the rush, but it's I have the same lifestyle. That's so that's that's I'm maintaining a lifestyle with the hustle. The hustle is the hustle. Transferable. Is, 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 right. yeah, the hustle is transferable, man. So <laughs> even yeah. even so even this taking this message a little bit further, I got hired. Uh, shouts out to Chicago Public School for giving my vendors license to talk to these kids. That's I go right. to high school and talk to these kids, and my movement. For that is called from the block to the boardroom because mm -hmm. I'm on the executive board for a professional football league right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and my message to them, hey, I came from the same Chicago public schools that you did. And the reason why I'm successful is because I'm smart. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing in the world to be is a failure. That's the easiest thing. It's, it takes no effort. It takes no requirement or nothing. So you have to apply yourself and take advantage of the opportunity that's in front of you. And I, I give them the stories about when I was in the federal penitentiary, uh, my roommate had 10 years. And the, while we was in there, I took what they call ACE classes, continue education, continue uh, adult education, let's see, continue, yeah. Adult continual education, ACE. And I took college courses. Mm -hmm. I took business, I took computer classes, so on and so forth. This guy was locked up for 10 years. He never got his GED. Mm -hmm. But he'd wake up every morning and do a thousand push-ups. So I used to ask him, what you trying to do? Be the strongest guy to work at Wendy's? You ain't trying to get you no education. Like I literally <laughs> asked him that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> serious. Like, how do you how do you be locked up for 10 years, man, and not get your GED? Mm -hmm. And then you got you have someone that's in the that's in your cell with you that can help you. And you see, you I ain't just talking about what I'm doing. Every day I'm taking ace classes and college courses business management classes, computer courses, and so on and so forth. So uh, what I've noticed about a lot of people is there are a lot of smoke and mirrors and there are a lot of talk because it takes effort to be successful. It takes uh, commitment. It takes dedication. It takes discipline to be successful. And I, and I possess those qualities, man. I believe in me and I believe in my dreams. And if so if you don't have it, Maybe you could see me and that can spark it in you. Cause you're mm. like, damn, that nigga ain't no better than me. He uh, he talks slick, but he ain't no he ain't no better than okay. Let me let that be your reason. Let that be the reason. Let this be the motivation. I'm here to motivate people to do right. Yep. Not to be a drug kingpin or not. Or not to, I'm here to inspire you to let you know, hey, the hustle is transferable. Mm -hmm. That's that's my mission for anybody that's watching this podcast that has any inkling of an ideal, man, that they know they need to get up out before before them people come knocking on your door. 